أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا صدق الله العظيم This surah is called surah al-nasr Nasr means victory and help and at the same time this surah is surah is called surah at-tawdi'ah wadda'a yuwadda'u means to say goodbye to someone and this surah is called surah at-tawdi'ah because this surah is saying goodbye to rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which means saying goodbye to him from this world and telling him that your time to depart from this world is coming soon. Abdullah bin Abbas radiyallahu anhu narrates the hadith which is in Muslim. He says, Surah al-Nasr akhuya suwari nuzula. Surah al-Nasr is the last surah to reveal on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But this does not mean that this is the last revelation ever came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There were some ayahs revealed after this surah. As a complete surah, this is the last surah that was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just like we read in the ahadith that Surah Al-Fatiha is the first surah that was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That simply means first complete surah that was revealed was Surah Al-Fatiha. Otherwise, some ayahs of different surahs were revealed before that. Same thing, Surah Al-Nasr, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ The surah was the last surah, complete surah, that was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdullah bin Umar radiyallahu anhu says, as it is narrated in Tafsir al-Qurtubi, that the surah was revealed during Hajjatul Wada'a. During Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's last hajj, in fact, that was his first and last hajj in Islam. Remember all the hajj that he performed before hajj was established in Islam, they are not considered the hajj in Islam and they are not considered the official hajj of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mainly his main purpose of performing those hajj was to go over there and invite people to Islam or before that he used to go over there and do worship according to his understanding, but not according to the wahi. So that was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's first and last hajj. And as we know, that hajj became fard in Islam in the ninth year of hijrah, and according to some scholars' opinion, in the seventh year of hijrah. And the first time hajj was performed in Islam was during the ninth year of hijrah. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of course, himself did not go for hajj, but he sent a group of Sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een under the leadership of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu. <coughs> then the year after that, tenth year of hijrah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself went for hajj. So Abdullah bin Umar radiyallahu anhu says, the Surah Surah Al-Nasr was revealed in Mina during Hajjat Al-Wada'a. After that, Al-Yawma Akmaltu Lakum Deenakum Al-Aya was revealed, which says, Today I have perfected your deen. Wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati, completed my favor on you. Wa raditu lakum al-Islam ad-Deen, and have chosen Islam as a religion, as a deen for you people. Which is the third ayah of Surah Al-Ma'idah. That ayah was revealed 80 days before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's death. Then after that, the last ayah of Surah An-Nisa was revealed. يَسْتَفْتُونَكْ قُلِ اللَّهُ يُفْتِيكُمْ فِي الْكَلَالَةِ Ayah about the inheritance. That is the last ayah of Surah An-Nisa and that was revealed 50 days before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's death. Then after that, Ayah number 128 of Surah Al-Tawbah was revealed. 
لقد جاءكم رسول من انفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف الرحيم mentioning some qualities of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that was revealed about 35 days before rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's death then the ayah was revealed ayah number 281 of surah al-baqarah واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه الى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون which is considered the last ayah that was revealed from Quran to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lived about 21 days after that then he passed away when the surah was revealed surah an-nasr Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited the surah to Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een in the gathering of Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een. All the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een were very pleased hearing this surah. Because the surah is telling the ummah that now is the time that you got the victory and you got the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala openly and everyone can believe and everyone can see and understand that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam really have taken over all of his great enemies. This was a message that was pleasing Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een. But Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, as soon as he heard it, he started crying. So there are Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een who said that we started thinking to ourselves, and one Sahabi said, I said to a person sitting beside me, look at this man. We are all pleased and we have a good revelation. And he's crying. That Sahabi says, later on we found out that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu got the message from the surah that we did not. And he understood the surah, the message of the surah, the deep message of the surah that was really given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this is why he was crying. Because the surah is saying to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, now your duties are completed. The duty of conveying the message of Islam and of completing this deen is completed. So now, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as you see the victory, and you conquered Makkah Mukarramah, you took our enemies, and you, and the iman is completed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, now keep on doing tasbih and istighfar, which simply means, now just wait for your last day because your responsibility, your duties are completed and just wait to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the basic message of the surah and this is why this surah is called Surah At-Tawdiyah which means a surah that is saying goodbye to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam your work is over, is completed now you should be ready to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are sent for a special work and when the work is done and when the work is completed then those prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have to go back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ when the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when the support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes and the victory, وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا And you see the mankind entering into the, in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in troops, in large groups. Then, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ Keep on praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking His Forgiveness, إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا Surely, He is the forgiving one. So, Rasul, the message of this surah is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as you see the help of Allah openly now, and the sign of the help of Allah 
are two. Number one, Fath, which means conquering of Makkah Mukarramah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam conquered Makkah Mukarramah in the eighth year of Hijrah. The second sign of the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجَىٰ You see people entering into the, in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in troops, in large groups. And this happened during the ninth year of Hijrah, ninth and tenth year of Hijrah, when large group of people started entering into Islam. To understand the background of this victory and people entering into Islam, we have to go back a little into the history and in the seer of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to understand it properly. In the sixth year of Hijrah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw a dream that him and Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een are entering Makkah Mukarramah with Ihram and they are performing Umrah. He mentioned this dream to Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een. And of course the dream of Anbiya alayhi musalatu was salam is a wahi, is a form of revelation. So they all knew that they will be entering Makkah Mukarramah and performing Umrah because up to that time they thought they will never be able, of course in near future, they will never be able to enter Makkah Mukarramah because of the kuffar of Quraysh. But now the dream is telling them that don't worry about the kuffar of Quraysh, you will perform the Umrah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got the group of Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa with him and he went for Umrah. As they arrived to a place called Hudaybiyah, very close to Mecca, the kuffar of Quraysh came over there with their army and they confronted Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and stopped the Muslims from entering into Mecca al Mukarramah. That was the time when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a treaty with the kuffar of Quraysh that is known as Sulh al hudaybiyah The treaty of al hudaybiyah because it was done at the place of al hudaybiyah That was the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really tested the iman of Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa jama'in. They went through a lot of tests during that time. They had to pass many tests that time. But they passed all of them. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started making this treaty with the kuffar of Quraysh, the clauses in that treaty, all the conditions of that treaty, They were, when you look at them, you feel that they are all against Muslims. And putting Islam and Muslims down. Kuffar of Quraysh are really forcing hard on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to accept all of their wishes and all of their conditions. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam going down to earth, and accepting all of their conditions to the extent there was a condition that shook all the Muslims. And not only shook them, some Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een were not even able to take them. And that was the condition that says that if any person accepts Islam in Mecca and will go to Medina Munawwara, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not allowed to keep that person in Medina. Which means no new converts. People are not allowed to accept Islam no more. And if they do accept Islam in Mecca, they will be just tortured in Mecca. They are not allowed to go to Medina. And if any Muslim, God forbid, God forbid, if any Muslim will turn away from Islam, and go to Makkah Mukarramah, the kuffar of Quraysh will not return that person to Medina. It's not fair.
and as they were writing the treaty, a person came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was beaten up very badly by the kuffar of Quraysh. They had not signed the treaty yet. He was beaten up very badly by the kuffar of Quraysh. Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa could see the bruises throughout the body. The face is swollen. And he was tied up in the chain. He came and he fell before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of course, allowed him, allowed him to come there because he was, the treaty was not signed yet. Kuffar of Quraysh said, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have to return this man to us. He said, we have not signed the treaty yet. They said, if you won't return him to us, this, this treaty will not be signed. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now even putting himself down, he says, okay, just let one person go for my sake. Just let him go for my sake. They said, we won't even do that. This person has to come back to us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, okay, then take him back. So that person is started shouting, oh Muslims, you see my situation here. You see how badly these people have tortured me. And now I came to you people and you are returning me to these people so that they will torture me even more. Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een could not take that. And it was so difficult for them to accept this. Ya Rasulullah, why are we being humiliated like this? Don't accept none of their conditions. Let's have a war, Ya Rasulullah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, No, as long as I can somehow stop the fight and war, I will do my best and I will accept any condition as long as it's not against Islam. I will sacrifice anything and accept any condition to stop the war. Subhanallah. We can imagine how difficult that situation was. One is there is a condition there, okay. They are not even able to digest that condition there. And on top of that, before signing the treaty of man comes, and he's beaten up badly, he's tortured badly, and he's returned to the kuffar of Quraysh. And not only this, as he was returned to them, they started beating him up just right there and then, and they took him back. Umar radiallahu anhu could not take it no more. That's it. That was enough for him when he saw that. He went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, very upset. He said, Ya Rasulullah, didn't you say that we will be entering Mecca and performing the Umrah? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, yes, I said it. But did I say we will do it during this year? We tried it this year. And I know now that we cannot do it this year. I did not promise you of any year, I told you we will be doing the Umrah, and I know we will be doing the Umrah. But I never said this year. He said, Ya Rasulullah, alasna ala al-haqqi wa aduwuna ala al-batil. Aren't we following the, tr following the truth, and our enemies are on the wrong track? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, yes. He said, فَلِمَ نُعْطَ الدَّنِيَةَ فِي دِينِنَا إِذًا Then why should we, should we be humiliated in our deen because of following this deen? <coughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Umar radiallahu anhu, أَيُّهَا الرَّجُلْ O man, be careful of what you're saying. You got to realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help me. And one day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us the victory over these people. But I have not received the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do anything else at this time. Umar radiallahu anhu realized that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is also upset now. Imagine. Who had more pressure than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at that time? 
the pressure of controlling all the Muslims. And now he sees the situation when that Sahabi is being returned, and that Sahabi is not a follower of Abu Bakr or Umar. That Sahabi is a follower of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why he's tortured. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself is returning that person to him, to them. And then dealing with the kuffar of Quraysh wasn't easy. No one had more pressure than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at that time. But he was very peacefully, politely and wisely controlling the situation and dealing with that situation. When Umar radiallahu anhu saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replying to him in this manner, which means Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not appreciate any more questions. And he does not want Umar to continue asking anything else. Umar, go away if you're not satisfied, but I'm not willing. This is what it meant, but he didn't say. So Umar radiallahu anhu went to Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And amazingly, when we go back to the book of Hadith, we find that Umar radiallahu anhu, of course, he's the same man, so he asked the same questions. But amazingly, the replies from Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu were exactly the same as he got the reply from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa word by word. As he's receiving it from there, and then just saying it from his mouth. That was the connection of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He replied the same thing word by word. When Abu Bakr, when Umar radiallahu anhu asked him that how come we are not able to perform the Umrah, whereas Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said we will do the Umrah, we will perform the Umrah. He said the same thing. He said, did he say we will do it this year? He asked him the same thing. He said, aren't we following the truth and our enemies are going on the battle, on, uh, going astray? He said, yes. Asked him the same question again. Why should we be humiliated because of following this deen? And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu replied the same thing that Abu Bakr, Allah is not going to let Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa down. He will help his Prophet. And he used the exact same words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Then Umar radiallahu anhu asked him again. He said, why don't we fight against these people? And he replied the same thing. He said, and in the same manner, he said, Oh man, you should beware of what you're talking about. And same message, word by word. So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of course, <coughs> He made that treaty with the kuffar of Quraysh at that time, and this was the sixth year of Hijrah. Before going into the second part of it, here I should pause for a minute to mention one thing. We look at Umar radiallahu anhu and what he did. And sometimes we feel, see, Umar radiallahu anhu was very straightforward, he was this and this, and we might take these lessons of being straightforward, truthful, and these type of lessons from this hadith, which will be very wrong, remember this. It will be very wrong to take any lesson from Umar radiallahu anhu in this hadith, except for one lesson. And that is what Umar radiallahu anhu says as the, at the end of the hadith. He says, فَعَمِلْتُ لِذَلِكَ أَعْمَالَ After that, when I cooled down, I realized it was my mistake, and throughout my life, I kept on doing certain deeds, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive this sin of mine. He says, every other sin, I was sure that Allah will forgive me. This was the only sin that throughout my life, I was worried it may never be forgiven, and I was afraid Allah might punish me for this. فَعَمِلْتُ لِذَلِكَ أَعْمَالًا I did a lot of things to get Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness from this sin. So we need to realize it was a mistake. Umar radiallahu anhu made that mistake. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu had the understanding. Anyway, 
To make the long story short, and we don't, we are not talking about history, we are just talking about the part related to the surah, and part that we can, by which we can understand the message of the surah properly. This was in the sixth year of Hijrah. And part of the conditions were that for ten years, Muslims, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi wa will not have any war against the kuffar of Quraysh, which means they will not fight against each other for ten years. And after ten years they will decide what they want to do. And another condition there was that if any group of Arabs would like to get, be, uh, join Quraysh in this treaty and become part of Quraysh, they can do so. And if any group of Arabs decide to be with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this treaty and join Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they can do that also. So which means the treaty will not be just limited to Muslims and Quraysh. It can go further and other clans of Arabs can get into this treaty by joining one of these two groups. Which simply means whoever will join, then the other group will not have any right to fight against that clan. Then there will be no war against these clans either. There was a clan called Bani Bakr. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the kuffar of Quraysh, they made the treaty, Rasulullah uh, Bani Bakr joined the kuffar of Quraysh, and there was another clan.